Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the NetSuite podcast. I'm Megan O'Brien, co-host of the podcast. We have a great episode in store for you today. Not one, but two guests on the docket from Guidecraft, a leading brand in children's toys for the early education and consumer markets. Dana Schultz, NetSuite data content and IT support, and Kristen McHugh, director of IT and distribution, are both joining us. We talk all about Guidecraft's growth from a wood shop in 1966 to an international brand, its mission and values, and its use of multiple NetSuite offerings to get its products around the world as efficiently as possible. Just a quick note, we did record this during a conference, so there's a little bit of background noise. With that, let's jump right in because you're not going to want to miss out on this episode. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. It's not every day that we have the opportunity to have two guests on our podcast instead of one. Before we dive in, would you both like to introduce yourselves and talk about your role at Guidecraft? My name is Kristen McHugh, and I am the Director of IT and Distribution um, with Guidecraft out of the Minnesota office. And my name is Dana Schultz, and I am in our IT support and data content. I'm also a NetSuite administrator, and I'm also in the Minnesota office. Oh, amazing. Well, let's dive into the company a bit as well. What does Guidecraft do? Guidecraft uh, sells educational toys for our STEAM and STEM products. Uh, We're a 50 plus year old company that started in a garage in New York by a gentleman named Fred Fine. Um, And then we've just grown internationally from there. Can you explain how Guidecraft's mission and values really guide the business? Um, With our STEAM and STEM programs, we create a lot of our products uh, with our STEAM and STEM. We have some nature and then we have some educational um, toys that we also carry for some of our customers. We do a lot of school supply and one of our big box customers is Scholastic. Amazing. And for for our listeners who might not know, can you explain what STEAM and STEM is? So STEM is science, technology, educational, education, and math and STEAM adds the architectural concept to that. Oh, amazing. So Guidecraft was founded in 1966 as a wood shop. Were there any key moments in the last nearly 60 years that were central to the company becoming the business that we see today? Yeah, so about 10 or 15 years ago, we really transitioned into um, expanding our product line. Uh, We were primarily toys back in those days. We've moved into furniture, and we started really becoming a more international business, uh, moving more towards Europe and Asia, and that really is where we're expanding and growing, um, as well as in the U.S., don't get me wrong, uh, but becoming a more worldwide company. And who is Guidecraft's customer base? We do mostly business to business, uh, B2C, and direct. That's a pretty, it's a pretty diverse stream of customers there. What are some of the challenges in selling to all those different groups? So you have, because you have different B2B and B2C, you have different marketing strategies, you have different reporting that needs to be done, um, having in consideration for like marketplace fees, different pricing structures, and trying to make sure that you stay competitive in the marketplace and things like that. And what are the primary channels that Guidecraft sells through? So for B2C, we have um, our Guidecraft website. We also have direct sales on Amazon, Walmart, Target marketplaces. And then we also have wholesale customers uh, like Wayfair, Scholastic, Overstock um, in the US. Um, And internationally, we have customers like Findel, QSH in Asia. So we have a multitude of different uh, customer bases, a lot of educational catalogs. That's no small feat. Those are big companies. What makes Guidecraft stand out from other companies that sell children's toys and furniture? We base a lot of our toys and furniture off in nature and then the STEAM and STEM programs. Um, Most of our toys are made out of natural woods. 
And then we constantly have our designers searching for new inspirations and designs for new toys and new furniture ideas. So if my stocking serves me correctly, both of you were at the company before NetSuite was implemented in 2017. So you have pretty good insight into how the company operated before. What did Guidecraft's tech stack look like previously? Previously, Guidecraft was more of a break fix company, um, multiple complications with their systems. With building our own mapping, we had to manually do a lot of the work ourselves. Um, we had to build all of our integrations ourselves, our, in, our inventory and reports ourselves. And how long were you kind of on that system and where did it fall short? We were on Sage 100 for 11 years. Um, a lot of it became with the crystal reports, the inventory reports, and then just the multiple, multiple inability to process different orders and just all the processes that we had to go through manually to uh, get different things to work out throughout the system. Now, were there major objectives that the business wanted to accomplish but really couldn't due to the shortcomings of that system? Yeah, one of the biggest uh, shortcomings in that system for us was, again, we were becoming a more international business. Uh, the processes that were needed for the complications of tax reporting, um, reporting in general, and the inability to really customize the system to suit our needs, that really held us back a lot. and. Uh, made us start looking for a new system. Were there key criteria that you were looking for in a new system? We were looking for a robust all-in-one system that had the capabilities of live inventory and the international capabilities and some customization capabilities. And what made NetSuite stand out compared to other systems on the market? Were there any features in particular that caught the company's attention? Uh, the biggest feature was the international capabilities with us being an international company um, and then just all the all-in-one robust comprehensive system. And what NetSuite modules does Guidecraft have in place currently? Well, we just recently went live with both NSAW and NSPB. Exciting. Uh, we did the implementation for both at the same time, so we took on a lot, but we got through it. Uh, we also have advanced accounting, advanced purchasing, the NetSuite a a connector. We're also in the process of getting that set up right now. And we have the WMS module. Wow. And I mean, we kind of talked about the fact that you really needed those international capability. Now, Guidecraft has subsidiaries across Asia, Europe, North America, last time I checked. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you've seen around running a global business? One of the biggest things, again, that we kind of touched on already and mentioned a few times was definitely tax reporting mm -hmm. and having those customized forms, knowing exactly what needs to be filed, having the percentages and the thresholds uh, built in, um, and then as well, uh, transfer policies uh, when we're shipping stuff from different warehouses, uh, like if we're shipping stuff from Asia to the U.S., the policies that we have to follow with transfer pricing, uh, things like that. And how does NetSuite One World help manage these issues? So the built-in tax reporting is pretty robust with NetSuite. Um, that gave us a lot of what we needed to really get started internationally. Um, we're working towards more. Uh, we are growing some more. We're looking at moving to more B2C in uh, Europe and Asia. So that part of our business is growing and there's a lot of complications with more tax stuff there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're working on that. And then also, like I said before, the ability to do the intercompany transactions and the clearing accounts for that, um, that really helped us with processing that, that information. Fantastic. And you also have warehouses in a number of these locations and implemented NetSuite warehouse management system to help optimize operations in these facilities. So how has NetSuite WMS increased the efficiency of your warehouse operations? We currently only use WMS in the Minnesota office. Mm -hmm. um, we use ShipStation, a third party, for our other North Carolina office. Um, this helped with the accuracy, and the, pr the picking, the pulling, and the shipping, of it, and also our inventory management. 
portion of our company. And with such a global presence and so many, I I assume so many orders, I imagine that order fulfillment can get complex. How does NetSuite Advanced Order Management help facilitate that part of the business and how has it improved your processes? Uh, It's definitely improved our processes. We use that for our website accounts and a lot of our direct sale accounts. So this helped us really focus on uh, the system allowing it to, using the rules in AOM to dictate where they're going to pull the product from, the closest physical location, um, how many different locations it can pull from at the on one transaction level and really just helping us sparse out where we need to put that product and where it's shipping from primarily and going to. NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system, is everything you need to grow all in one place. Financials, inventory, HR, and more. Make better decisions faster so you can do more and spend less. See how at netsuite.com slash pod. And I did want to touch base on your use of NetSuite inventory management. With so many brands, locations, retailer, customers, and products, that's a pretty critical module. How does it help you make sure that you have the right products at the right time for the right people? Uh, We currently have all of our top selling products in all of our warehouse locations. And then the toy stay currently in Minnesota. Um, Looking at um, our sales trends from the past year, and then that's how we determine on what products we need to move where. Predicting demand for children's toys, it seems tough as I I imagine it's subject to changes based on factors like seasonality, consumer preferences, things like that. So how does NetSuite demand planning help predict those shifts so you can stay one step ahead? So we're always looking at, at our sales trends. And then we always add like a percentage to the bottom number to create the demand for each quarter and location. Guycraft also, as we touched on, you guys just implemented NetSuite Analytics Warehouse to add even more data analytics and reporting capabilities. I know you're kind of new to it. Have you started pulling reports from NSAW? Um, yeah, our two biggest reports we included, which were two of our, our big kind of pain points, uh, were a gross profit report and a kind of a sales snapshot report that we do. And between those two reports, uh, it would take about two weeks to run and between the two reports probably about 25 different NetSuite save searches and reports to combine all together. So with our implementation our NSAW team worked on one report and we worked on another report as part of our UAT and now I can very happily say that those two weeks are down to just a few hours just to export and put it in our format that our team likes to see. That's fantastic. And other than that, is there any other data that you pay particular attention to in NSAW? And how do those insights influence Guidecraft's influence Guidecraft's overall strategy and decision making? Yeah, the great part about NSAW is the built-in connectors that that has. So I think it has like 40 connectors automatically built in right now. And I know you guys are always working on more. Um, so we've able, been able to connect our data from Google Analytics from Amazon, and we are actually just switching our website platform to Shopify, which is also a connector. So we'll be able to pull in all the information from our web sales as well. And then we're working with our departments that do other complicated reports, the same as the the gross profit and the snapshot report, so that we can bring those reports all together in one comprehensive place, so we can help other teams to have the same success and not have to have a week to run a report where they can just run it on demand when they need it. And Guycraft has been using NetSuite Advanced Customer Support, or ACS. Huge fan of that on this podcast. We've had people on to talk about it a couple times. But can you delve into how you've used ACS to maximize the benefits of NetSuite? And what has that experience been like? Yeah, we've been working with Jenny and Nicole. I'm going to give a little shout out to them because they are amazing to work with. They've been great. Uh, We did our initial health check uh, with them and we found a few just kind of minor issues and cleanup stuff. 
um, we were able to kind of work with them and transition some workflows into some scripting solutions uh, so that it can run in the back end and make the processes a little bit faster and free up some of that uh, time from the workflow processes. And just the, the general knowledge that they have and the quickness for their responses, they're always able to pull in another team if they don't have the exact information. We're using them, uh, utilizing them to set up our connectors uh, that we are just going live with. So yeah, it's been absolutely great and it's been awesome just to have that resource that intimately knows how our NetSuite system works. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned implementing connectors, but were there any other specific problems that ACS has helped GuideCraft with? Um, we did have one issue that they're currently helping us uh, sort through with uh, cycle counts and having a uh, loss of revenue because the in and out transaction, because they're at the same time, grabs that average cost and that skews it a little bit. So they're helping us work through that issue and we're actually looking into smart count as well because we think that might help solve the problem as well. So working in tandem with both of those, so that's been really helpful for us. What are the main benefits you've seen from having all these capabilities and functionalities in a single suite? Um, decrease a lot on our reporting times um, and then just better management overall on, on data searching and having more communication and all the data within one system. If you were to give a testimonial about NetSuite to someone who was considering implementing it, what would you say? Um, lots of capabilities, always evolving and always growing as a system. It's an awesome, robust, all-in-one. I love that. and. We're, we're coming to the end here, but exciting question for the end. What does the future look like for GuideCraft? Are there any big goals or priorities on the horizon? Yeah, we're always looking to the future and new growth and new opportunities to build You know, our company and our system. We're always looking for new uh, modules and things within NetSuite that we can inv enhance our customer experience and our user experience. Um, we're looking at some uh, the management tool that you guys have, the uh, like the time management, that tool, uh, so that we can kind of bring that in with all of our teams so they can start getting some alerts um, as far as like the item setup process and really just kind of looking towards growth and moving forward. That's all so exciting. And I'm, I'm particularly excited to see kind of how NetSuite plays into the whole equation. Well, thank you both so much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having us. Thank you. That brings us to the end of another awesome episode. I think one of the most interesting components of that interview was how GuideCraft is using the connectors available in NetSuite Analytics Warehouse to bring all their data into one comprehensive view. We talk so much about becoming a data-driven company, so it's amazing seeing companies like GuideCraft actually bring that to life. Huge thanks to Dana and Kristen for joining us to share GuideCraft's journey. And as always, a big thanks to our wonderful editing team over at Oracle and to all of you for tuning in. If you want more episodes just like this one, make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us a rating and review. Until next time. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.